It vibrates like a living being. What will emerge from this strange thing? Okay, so that might murder us, but it also might not. Hey everybody and welcome back to Sonic F First 30 where we take a blind, unbiased look at a game that most likely you've never heard of. Now today we're taking a look at the game called Out There The Alliance. This is on Nintendo Switch. Look at that eclipse. Right, it's my left hand. This is called Out There The Alliance. So this game is all about getting to a destination that's super far away. So you can see in the bottom, well, you can't really see it, but can you maybe see just the, the tip of, uh, sorry, the red arrow in the bottom right hand corner? That's pointing all the way down to a destination that we're trying to get to. So the idea is kind of FTL. You're jumping from place to place. You're gonna encounter some, like this, some story events, and then you're trying to survive and make it. And you have to manage your fuel, oxygen, and your hull, which we'll see as we move forward. A huge cosmic beast is swimming through the star system. It looks like a sleek shark, and it moves by gathering and ionizing hydrogen molecules before ejecting them through its gills. Smaller versions of the creature swim at its side. I say smaller, but they're still much bigger than my ship. Let's follow its course. Like a remora, I fly alongside the beast on a parallel course. It ignores me. My sensors indicate that the ionized hydrogen wash is suitable for my fuel tanks. I take several enormous scoops and refill my tanks. The beast passes through an asteroid field and I hide within it until the shark passes by. Free fuel. Okay, so now the interesting part. So now that we jump to a planet, now we want to orbit it. It's gonna cost us some fuel and oxygen as you saw. We're gonna land. That's gonna cost even more resources. And now we have the option to drill or take off. Just so you know, drilling takes fuel and you have to decide how deep you're gonna dig. And you can see this bar changing from green to yellow to red. That's the riskiness of your drill. You drill further, you get more resources, but you may break your drill. So we'll just play, it's kind of safe, we'll just go yellow. And over here, you can see we got iron and we got whatever W is. It'll make more sense as we keep going. So even just leaving the planet now takes resources. And if we wanna leave, and move to another one, it's gonna take even more resources. So this is saying it's a risky orbit, but we don't care. So, okay, let's uh, probe, because now we, we can't land on this one, but we can probe it. So let's do, let's try a red probe, right? This probably is gonna be bad, but let's try it. The atmosphere broke my probe. Drilling too deep can be hazardous. So we now have to fix our probe, but we got hydrogen and helium, which are both fuel sources that we can use. So, this is our drill. Each item that you carry takes up space on your ship, and this is as much space as you have. This is our ability to jump from star to star. This is our ability to jump from planet to planet. This is our telescope. Uh, I guess it tells you all about um, if a planet is safe or not. This is our drill, and this is our probe. Now, we have to repair this, and we need... Uh, iron. We need iron to repair it. That's fine. As you can see here, we have 20 iron, so let's go ahead and repair that. Repaired, no problem. We can continue. Let's back up. Our hull is a little bit damaged because you take damage as you're traveling, as you um, land and you do other activities. So we need to repair it. Iron is used, if you can see the symbol um, right, where, right by where the uh, letter A is, up in the top left, it has that little three dot symbol. That's the same thing as over here on the far right side. Uh, as where you're gonna put it to restore your hull. You see that? And so it used our iron to do that. We can also uh, redo our fuel and we'll use helium to do that as well. We want maximum fuel. Oxygen is also very important, but we're doing pretty okay on all those. So we freed up some space. Our ship is now back to good. We can try to land here, but the problem is it has a dangerous atmosphere because it's a freaking sun and it's gonna damage our hull. If you see that exclamation point on the hull, that means we're gonna take a ton of damage. I don't really wanna do that because it's dangerous and I've never actually, uh, in the one run that I did earlier, I explored like all of, you know, nine planets. I never found anything good at a star. I tread carefully in an asteroid field looking for mineral resources. Suddenly a savage pack of spider-like creatures as big as my ship emerges from the shadows. They grab and throw my ship to one another. Their grasp is firm and I dare not start the engines for fear of crashing into an asteroid. They bring me to a large asteroid at the flat surface of which I can see some kind of building. A temple with its columns pointed at a distant star. In fact, this structure looks more like a catapult. Are they going to launch me into their sun? Um, we are going to start our engines at full capacity. 
I won't let them put me into their infernal machine. I wait for an opportunity, and when the time is right, I push the throttle to the maximum. The spider's grasp is firm, but after a short struggle, I managed to lift them from an asteroid, and they let me go. So that took a ton of our fuel, but we also didn't get launched into a star, which I would say is a positive outcome. So we're a little bit low on fuel. We need to dig. And we need fuel badly. I'm going to break our drill, but we have iron to fix it. But we got a ton of stuff. So this is great. So let's take all. Let's go ahead and repair this. That'll use a little bit more iron. Platinum and silicon. How do we... There we go. So we will, uh, let's see, we have 20 silicon already. So platinum is really what we need. But check this out. We can go ahead and use this right now. Oh no, we can't use that to repair. I don't think we can repair on a planet is what I'm learning. Okay, well then we have to make a decision probably to drop the iron. And then we'll take the platinum because platinum we have none of and so that i feel like that's an okay trade so we're really low on fuel right now so let's go ahead and refuel that got us back up to about 70 which is better than nothing and we have plenty of iron so let's just get our hole back up to 100 and i'll show you what it's like to orbit a star i don't know that there's anything useful here that did 70 damage. There's nothing here. That's great. I'm glad we did that. We're now out of iron, which is real bad. Uh, so the, uh, basically what you should take away from this is don't drive into stars. Ghost talked and asked me to join them outside the ship. I have no notion of time anymore. I don't know if I've had enough sleep. What? Okay. That's strange. Risky orbit, but we need fuel. Probe. Okay, so we got fuel. This is good. Uh, transfer all. We can launch probe again. Oh my god, we can! Hold on, let's... Okay, let's reef... Uh... Yeah, we need more fuel. Can we probe again? Super deep. Go deep. Oh! And sudden pressure should have destroyed the probe. I was quite shaken as well. I'll have to rebuild it. Some equipment has been destroyed. <clears throat> okay, so now we have to... What is that? <clears throat> so now we have to actually rebuild it, which I'm assuming is harder. We need iron and platinum. We have no iron. We do have platinum. What is this? A mysterious cocoon made of stone threads. <clears throat> As I walk over its surface, I can feel its heat. It vibrates like a living being. What will emerge from this strange thing? Okay, so that might murder us, but it also might not. We are not going to orbit that star because that would be dumb. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll quit back to the main menu because we can continue. What I like to do at the end of the first 30s is kind of wrap up the game with my thoughts and maybe point out some things that weren't as obvious if you didn't have, in this case, the, the joy, joy cons in your hands. Um, this game is rad. This is just about survival. It's about moving from planet to planet, managing your resources, and trying to get to your destination. And I have a long, long way to go. And so for people who, right away I can tell that for people who need the combat, who need the action, this is probably not so much for you because as far as I can tell, there's no combat at all. It's all about story. It's all about progression. It's all about survival, uh, which is really interesting. There is a risk versus reward where you're like, do I want to drill really deep and risk blowing up my stuff? Do I want to probe the planet? Do I want to visit this star or that one? Where's the best course? Um, I'm sure there is kind of a meta where you can just kind of figure out the best way to balance your resources. And maybe if you always do green, you can probably make it. But it seems like more and more, a lot of these jumps are requiring 30 and, and uh, up fuel, which means that you can't just always go really easy drilling green. You kind of are going to have to start drilling red and and, uh, and make that happen. 
Um, but anyway, I give this game a huge thumbs up. This is a really fun. Uh, and it's great that you can kind of leave your leave your run and come back to it because that's what I have to do here. We've been playing for so long. But anyway, yeah, highly recommended. Huge thumbs up. Definitely check this out if you've enjoyed games like FTL and Roguelite because you do have to start from zero each time you play this. Um, but that's it. So we're going to wrap up there. As always, let me know what you think. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. You know I enjoy talking to you guys about this kind of stuff. And until next time, turn bright, everybody.